Hey gamers, Smoking Tires here from CDVI Gaming. I have another video tutorial for you today. In 7 Days to Die, we are going to talk about electricity. The basics of electricity is that you need to create a circuit. A circuit consists of three parts. The source of the electricity, in this case your generator, the device you want to have powered on, and the wire between them in order to connect them up. To connect the devices, you must use the wire tool. The wire tool is effectively installing the wire between the devices for you. So here, we're going to have a simple circuit. I have a gas generator, I'm about to turn it on, and then we have a simple light. So all we need to do is right click the generator, right click the wire, and the wire tool connects the wire. So let's give it a go. So I'll turn the generator on, I'm going to right click the generator, and then I'll right click the light and you can see that that light is now powered on. If I turn off the generator, off goes the light too. In order to see the wiring you must have the wire tool in your hand. As you can see when I'm swapping between an empty hand and the wire tool the cables disappear. Now this is a welcome change for Alpha 21 as you don't see the cabling without it. Cabling before was really messy with big circuits so being able to hide it in this manner keeps everything looking really nice. Now you can run multiple devices off a single generator. I'm just going to turn this one back on. Here you can see we have three lights running off the same generator. Now the caveat to running multiple devices is ensuring that your generator is producing enough wattage in which to run the devices you have connected to it. Every device has a wattage power consumption when it's turned on. When you hold the wire tool over a device, it will show you its wattage rating. For example, this blade trap is 20 watts. So if your generator only produces 50 watts, much as this one does here, you see it's max output 50 watts, you can only have two blade traps which would be 40 watts. The third would be 60. So if I turn this generator on here, you see that the first two traps are turned on, the third one is not because there is not enough power in which to do so. Let's start with generators. There are three types of generator. The gas generator, which requires engines to be installed. Each engine adds 50 watts to the generator. This allows you to have a maximum of 300 watts. It then also requires you to frequently add gas to the generator to use as fuel. The more devices you have connected using more wattage, the faster the gas will be consumed. The battery generator is the second generator you will unlock in the game. The battery generator uses batteries in replacement of engines. The quality of the battery affects the wattage output for the generator. If I install one here, you see that it gives 29 watts. If I install a level 6, you get 50 watts. This is the same as the gas generator with an engine. As you progress through the game, you will want to replace the batteries over time to try to populate with six level six batteries to give you the maximum power output of 300 watts. As you connect devices to the battery generator, the power in the batteries will go down. As you just see in this lead battery here, there is just a drop in effectively what is stored within that battery. Once depleted, they will not provide any more power. You can either replace the batteries with a new one or look to charge up the battery generator. The third and final generator to unlock is solar. Instead of one block, this takes up four blocks. For this, you install solar cells instead of batteries or engines. Again, the quality of the cell affects the wattage output. Here you see level one is giving us 17 watts. Level 6 is giving us 30 watts. That gives you a max of 180 watts. Again, you will want to install all level 6 cells into the solar generator. Now, unlike batteries, the cells do not run out of power, nor do they require any intervention like fueling with gas. However, they obviously are solar panels, so they do require the sun and only work during the day. So what's the best generator to use? Well, obviously, you're going to start off with gas, as that's what you're going to be to unlock first. So here you can see, effectively, you know, I've got a gas circuit running. Generator off to the blade traps. But once you unlock battery generators, 
and you have sufficient batteries to power them, you're going to want to swap over and use your batteries as your main source. Now, your batteries are going to run out of juice. So what you can do then is keeping your generator, use your generator to then charge up your batteries. And what this will do then is act a bit like a hybrid car. You won't need to have the gas generator on all the time. You just add it when you actually need a charge and you'll end up using less gas overall. Now the real zero maintenance solution comes when you unlock solar because then you can add solar to your battery bank. Now the solar only has 180 watts of power as max but it's enough to just charge the batteries up. So what happens is your batteries are running your circuits all of the time and then come daylight solar comes on charges the batteries back up ready to continually use them. This is a solution now which is requires zero input from you to keep you going. You now have power, free power, all day long. Okay, so we're going to stop there and in the next video we'll show you the different devices you can use and some good examples. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.